Welcome to the Companion Chapel Everyday Bible Study Broadcast. My name is Mike, coming to you from the Great Lakes area of beautiful Ontario, Canada, on this gorgeous Tuesday, March 26, 2024, coming right up. It's a new book today. It's the book of Habakkuk. Now, this guy was a prophet, obviously, because what he wrote down was divine revelation. It was impossible to be man's imagination. The way it runs threads through the Bible, he uses all the key words that form a glossary through the Bible. And these three short chapters, it would have been impossible for this guy, Habakkuk, sitting around in sandals in a sheet somewhere in the Middle East 2,500 years ago to have this written down. It's going down thought for thought on the world stage today. Habakkuk, this is such a major prophet, such a major um, prophecy here. It's God's trademark stamp of validity. No, you can't find the keywords. You can't find the key of David in the English Bible because the English Bible, there's no such thing as an English Bible, okay? This is a trans, this is a translation. You're going in the frying pan today, I swear, man. This is a translation. Here's the original language manuscripts right here. And you study these original language manuscripts, the Masoretic text, and you'll find a pattern, an algorithm in it through the key words, the sense, meaning, and full expression of the key words. And then you translate those through these lexicons. Now, I use Justinius. I use Brown's Driver Briggs. I use this lexicon. It's the vocabulary of a language. And its branch of knowledge is found in these lexicons. And obviously... They don't think anyone's going to use these because they just fall apart. All my books fall apart. They're, they're online also. You can find them. The Strong's Concordance is one thing. You have to go beyond that to the lexicons. From the manuscripts to the lexicons, out from any English version you prefer. Now watch this book come to life and you'll just see it playing out on a world stage today. Habakkuk chapter 1 and verse 1. The burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. Now here he goes. O Lord, how long shall I cry, and thou wilt not hear, and even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou wilt not save? Why dost thou show me iniquity, and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me, and there that raise up strife and contention. Look at what's going on. In the, why is all this evil in the world just playing out? Why aren't you going to do something about it, God? Therefore the law is slacked, and judgment doth never go forth, for the wicked doth come past about the righteous, therefore wrong judgment proceedeth. You know, he's kind of perplexed. He's kind of like, why, why is all this evil playing out? This is a vision he's seeing. Though. This is for us today. And this is a very common question today when people say, there can't be a God because look at what's going on. God would stop this. No, 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 no. No. God's not running a daycare here. We're in a fallen condition. We're the ones that fell out of harmony with the universe. Us. We are the one-third. There's something inside of us that is not conducive to a place of peace beyond our comp present comprehension. Obviously, all the evil in the world comes from the human heart. It's perpetuated by the human heart. But it's instigated by one Satan that we followed. We are the one third that follows Satan. Satan's greatest trick is to fool the whole world into thinking he doesn't exist. Look how What's playing out on the world stage today? It's beyond all reasonables. It's an embarrassment to mankind and an abomination to God. And the other two thirds of the angels are just watching. This is just, this is just unbelievable. These people cannot come back into the kingdom of heaven. So there's a, there has to be a great separation of people. These people with these attitudes and ideologies that are perpetuating all this evil and the passive aggressiveness of it all. Two, people sitting back, oh, what did I do? Just put you my lawnmower on my beautiful manicured lawn. Don't get any scratches on my hardware in the driveway. Right? Watch out. Watch this come to life here. Let's go through some keywords. How long shall I cry? Do you think he's sitting there whining in self-occupation? Oh, poor me. I need a new kitchen. Look at my lawn. I need a new car. It's got a scratch. There's a light on on the dash. It won't come off. Okay, he's crying out on behalf of everybody, for the whole human family here. He's crying out. Look at this violence. Why don't you come do something, God? Now, You'll notice in the book of Habakkuk, he's got a lot of balls talking like to God like this. But he didn't have this book. We have this. Jesus Christ told us all things. So we have no excuse to ever talk to God like this. God has nothing to prove to us. God doesn't need any of us. We're in a fallen condition. We're the ones that fell. He wants his children back. He loves us. 
but you only accept free will love. God will not violate the principles of free will, and you cannot violate the principles of God, which are written here, without consequence. These promises written in the councils of eternity. It is irrational to think that you know more than God. And it comes in one simple book. As soon as you get those traditions of men from these churchy churches that are fake, that have sugar-coated this word out of your mind, and then allow God's love to come into your mind, understand, there's going to be a great separation of people. Some people are going to the hell side and some people are going back to a place of peace beyond our present comprehension. We still have a long way to go. There's still a millennium period. We still have to get cleaned up for a thousand years. That's how far we fell out of harmony with the universe before a great white throne judgment. As far as other people who have conceived ideologies, woe unto those with child who give suck in those days, conceive these ideologies and they're nursing them along thinking they know more than God. I believe in myself. We hear this all the time. I believe in myself. That means I believe in every logical and moral decision I make should be the gold standard for society. Mankind's bound by the principles of being human. That means we have inconsistent thought patterns, which leads to unprincipled beliefs. And you want the proof? 100% failure rate at governing ourselves. 100%. God's teaching us something here in this short little flesh age. Consider the affairs of time, infinity forward, infinity back. Where were we? The Bible answers it, obviously. The book of Job 38.7, all of us, all God's stars, that's bright shining life forces. We all sang for joy, shouting out in infinite felicity, the whole human family in totality. And then what happened? One third of us fell. Go to Psalms 90. Go to Ch Revelation chapter 12.4. One third of us followed Satan's construct. Self-occupation, overfed, unconcerned, non-grateful, unforgiving. Selfishness. That's what happened. Self-pride. I have different ideologies on how I think the universe should be run. God kicked us out. Says you got you got a hundred years or less. I will judge each case on its own merits. You get a hundred years or less, and you get one book to learn. What are you going to do with your time? Well, you know, spend ten thousand hours watching Netflix or do this. It's up to you, man. Whatever you do, it's all it's all you you get to choose where you want to go. If you want to take your ideologies and think you know more than God, that's unreasonable. That's irrational. God cannot reconcile irrational people. If you don't like God in your life, then that's fine. God says that's fine. Does it hurt him? Oh, big time. I think it's Ezekiel 20, Isaiah 22. Isaiah 22. Don't, don't even look at me. I'm crying. I'm saying all these people to this lake of fire. And it's not, the, not what mainstream Christians say a lake of fire is. You sick puppies who think God's a Hitler and he's going to torture human beings. It just means it's a harbor or a haven. That's what lake means. And fire means the internal passion of the mind. It means, it means your burning emotions, your ideologies. You think you're right all the time. And you can't be corrected. We know these people. They think everything's an argument wherever we're talking to them. They don't understand. Wisdom is a process of understanding your intuitions were wrong. We are here for correction. And Habakkuk tells us this in no uncertain terms. In fact, he uses that very word. If I can just... Uh, get going here with this okay let's go over some key words here oh, I hate text messages man Habakkuk 1.3 okay we're talking about uh, iniquity okay I don't want to go over too many keywords because I'll make this such this is like the fifth take I've done of this Habakkuk chapter 1 and I have to erase them all uh, for every video that you see I do I erase at least five at least Okay, iniquity and, and grievance are two words with evil. And it's avan and amal. It means the consequences of evil, uh, impression, and injustice. We see it going on on the world stage today. Spoiling and violence. This is really interesting. Of course, I find this in the manuscripts through lexicons, and I find these threads. Spoiling and violence, you would say, jolamas, and that means pillage, ruthless targeted violence in order to continue dictating and enforcing their will upon other nations their rules are a system of pillage and oppression now david used this in psalms 140 he's talking about violent people protect me from violent men protect me from what, what's that false witnesses you gather enough morally corrupt false witnesses and they produce an ethically corrupt set of governing institutional standards we see that today playing out on world stage greed and plunder and self 
occupation of my my self worth is depending on my bank account. You know your 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 own portfolio. Like greed and plunder have become normalized, and rich money handling men have set up and funded a legal system that authorizes it and a moral code that glorifies it. It's all about you and your personal stuff and things and your money. Don't worry about how you get it. It's all fair in business. Child labor, labor exploitation, human rights violations, war, genocide. Hey, invest here in war right now. You want to see who's making all the money? Just go to the congressman of the United States of America. Their stock portfolios or outperform anybody else's on planet Earth. Why is that? Because they're the lawmakers. They're the corrupt lawmakers. This is what we're talking about here. We're not talking. We're talking about institutional global powers. We're talking about morally corrupt lawmakers who form ethically corrupt governments. And I'm getting ahead of myself here. But what do they do? Like how is somebody like Nancy Pelosi up 120 million dollars? She's a civil servant. How does she do that? Because they're morally corrupt human beings. They know what they're doing and they don't care. It's money over people, profit over people, invest in war, big chemical, big food, big pharma, invest in these things. That's what they say. It doesn't matter. All's fair in business. Make, make money or make the world a better place. This is what's going on. Watch this come together. The law is slack. That's what we said. Morally corrupt lawmakers who make ethically corrupt governments. It's the people behind it that Habakkuk's talking about. The wicked are judges now. And then God says in verse 5, Behold ye the heathen, uh, and regard ye among the heathen, and wander marvelously, for I will work a work in your days, which you shall not believe, though it be told of you. What's God saying here? That this is a prophecy for us today, and you're going to find that out in this very, in chapter 2. It's a prophecy for us today. God's going to wrap up the affairs of time in this flesh age through the Lord Jesus Christ. It's over. It's a paradox of impossibilities. Progress, profit, consumerism, materialism, global growth, global spending, global investment is ecologically impossible. It just leads to oppression. Destroy the environment and oppress other people for money. As Larry Fink from BlackRock says, what the Fink, Larry? He's saying this. He goes, it's all about the pursuit of profit. We've commodified the basic necessities of life. Money is not your privilege. No, money is not your right. That's what he said. Money, right on his website. Money's not your right. It's a privilege. But we've commodified the basic necessities of life, creating grinding poverty throughout the world through globalism. These globalists, these rich money handling men. Who's behind these governments? Remember Abraham Lincoln said, it's a government of democracies of the people, by the people, for the people. What happened? We know what happened. As soon as government officials, well, the government officials are supposed to keep economic interest separate from political power. They don't. As soon as American officials meet big business behind closed doors, democracy dies in its tracks. It's dead. Out comes a fascist, capitalist corpocracy. It's the pursuit of profit. Vanguard, BlackRock, there's Larry What the Fink. These people have a total absence of humanity in their construct. They don't care about people. People are just surplus and expendable. They're just in the way. Unless they can exploit them. Capitalist hypocrisy, focused on the pursuit of profit. Total absence of humanity. Sacrifice humanity for short-term profit. Always follow the money and you'll see a clear pattern. You'll see a clear pattern. It's up to the individual to have an intellectual integrity towards historical truth. Political motivation has no, no regard for the well-being of the, the general population of the world, for God's children. The rat race sees no humanity in the individual. It's a trick you're set up to lose right from the beginning. You take the best hours or the best days or the best years of your life to go chase a paycheck and it's ground into you right from childhood so you can have shiny things. That's the curse on Cain. Your longings and wantings will rule over you. I can talk like this because I walked it. And you want to see the residuals of it? There's a piece of shit Cadillac Escalade that I can see right out this patio door that I had to have. Remember that Cadillac Escalade pickup truck white, that pearl diamond white paint? Ooh, my longings and wantings, I pursued that thing. I coveted it after. I shined it. 
And I realized, hey, the emptiness of the material world is going to kill you. God's coming to wrap up the affairs of time in this flesh age through the Lord Jesus Christ. For lo, I raised up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation, which shall march through the breadth of the land to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. Why did God say the Chaldeans? We know who the Assyrian is on a prophetic import. Who's the Assyrian today? Obviously, the Assyrian back in the Bible and prophetic import to today is the United States of America. It's not the people, the population. It's the corrupt government, the people behind the corrupt government, this corpocracy that runs the government. Money, lobbying should be outlawed. Lobbying, is the, what, a, what a name for it, lobby. Oh, we're just a lobby here. No, that's impact investing. That's legalized bribery. It's a system that doesn't work. These congressmen have to get elected every two years. This is what we're talking about in Habakkuk. They're constantly campaigning. How are they going to come up with the millions and millions of dollars they need to get that Congress? Cor corporate hypocrisy. And then they're like Dick Cheney. Or they're like, they're like Lloyd Austin. They go from Raytheon, merchant of death, oh, to Secretary of Defense. Or Cheney to Halliburton, oil, to Vice President. It's a system that doesn't work. And believe me, you warmongers have a special place in hell. There's no way out. Enjoy it now. Enjoy your money now. Enjoy your shiny things now. I pray for you. I pray for the whole human family. You could have made such a difference in the world. But you want to go drop 400,000 bombs in the Middle East since 2001? You want to invade the poorest country on planet Earth and say they blew up your buildings? You prove to me. It's not, it's like they're, they're behind, behind all science. The science of two planes hitting two bill and blowing up three buildings or collapsing three buildings. There's mathematics behind that. And there's a major university down in the United States. I'm not going to name it. You do your own research. It's proven beyond all reasonable doubt. It's not a possibility, not a probability. It's an absolute uncertainty. It doesn't add up that those two planes could have taken down those buildings and a third building. It's impossible. So prove to me, this is the question. That it wasn't a controlled demolition. False flag attacks. We're talking about false witnesses here. We just talked about David. False witnesses coming together, creating false flag attacks, and they go and invade the poorest countries. They just want to pillage. It's a system of pillage. It's, they sow the seeds of hatred, phobias, aggressive, imperialistic nationalism. They destroy traditional family values that make humans human. It's the United States and their NATO parties continue dictating and enforcing their will upon other nations. It's a system of pillage and oppression, which we're reading about right now, on a world stage. Why is it the Chaldeans? I said the Assyrians before. That means the most dangerous, destructive, destabilizing force. That's imported. But the Chaldeans doesn't say Babylonians, doesn't say Egyptians. We know Egyptians from the book of Revelation uh, means spiritually corrupt. We know Sodom or Sodom and Egypt, where Christ was killed, they said, but that just means spiritually corrupt, morally corrupt, just barnyard morals being celebrated and paraded around. Morals is a benchmark for human virtue, human values. It's gone, obviously. Why does it say the Chaldeans? Why does it say the Babylonians? That just means confusion. It's not confusion. Chaldeans were where Daniel tripped around, where Daniel, Daniel's crib was. Daniel was there. The most educated technology we're talking about. Using intellectual abilities. Not for the greater good. But to create bombs and weapons of mass destruction. And to create propaganda. And to create psychological operations to work on our sense of agency. Psychops. To change your ability to think critically or independently. Your function of agency, that's one thing. Uh... I did not have sexual relations with that woman. I was down at Jeffrey Epstein's. My nose is itchy. That's function of agency. What about purpose of agency? It changed your thought patterns. It's called meta. They have, it's right in front of you. Satan's greatest trick is to fool the whole world into thinking he doesn't exist. To meta a thought pattern. To walk amongst your mental disposition. To change your religious authority. It's happening all around us. It's up to the individual to learn to say, no, hey, my feelings don't trump the truth. You, get, you can't develop an emotional attachment to your uh, 
journalistic person up there, these snakes in suits with their white lab coat patsies lying to us. You can tell when somebody's lying and when somebody's not lying. To look at Tucker Carlson and, and uh, Vladimir. Do I like Vladimir Putin? 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 Hell no. He's a tyrant. But you know what I like about him? Two hours I was caffeinated. Cap cap whatever the word is. Cap I, couldn't, I couldn't look away. Vladimir and that interview with Tucker Carlson, he was telling the truth. You could tell he was telling the truth. Give us a big historical lesson. I'm thinking, why is he giving us a historical lesson? Think about it. If you want to destroy a citizenry, destroy their history. He gave a two-hour history lesson on the construct of this. It is the way it is because this is how it happened. You see the pattern. Whereas the United States just pulling down statues, rewriting history books, destroying its citizenry, destroying the soul of America itself. The Chaldeans using what? The four sealed chump file. I think we're coming up on that. I better, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let's go. Okay. The Chaldeans. That's the United States of America. The technology they use to destroy planet Earth. They are terrible and dreadful. Their judgment and their dignity shall proceed of themselves. Terrible and... What's the other word here? Terrible and dreadful. Now this terrible and dreadful in the Hebrew is Ayam Yare. And we know what Yare means if you study with me. It means to revere or to fear. But this word translated terrible here, Ayam, it means to anticipate with great anticipation and fear. Shock and awe. Remember that? 750,000 Iraqi widows. Remember that? Greatly feared. Great fear prompted by a high-tech mighty army. Dreadful. Do you revere it or do you fear it? Isn't that just the greatest thing? Their judgment and their dignity. They call themselves the elite. That's elevation. They think they're better. They go around thinking, we're going to restore democracy here, but all they do is destroy everything and pillage the land and oppress the people. Just kill them. Just kill them. Their horses are swifter than the leopards and more fierce than the evening wolves. Their horsemen shall spread themselves and their horsemen shall come from afar and shall fly as an eagle that hastes to eat. What are we at a petting zoo here? Is that what we're talking about? Horse means expressive, revealing, mobile power throughout the Bible. There's your glossary link. Apply that to the book of Revelation when mainstream Christians are saying, oh, there's going to be horses coming out of the sky with, and we're going to be throwing blood and crud on everybody. And, and, uh, and yeah, you get the Hollywood depictions and mainstream everything is just saturated with lies. Okay, just saturated with lies. Here is the truth. Jesus Christ is the truth. The truth will set you free. He is perfect in righteousness, perfect in trustworthiness. He is the author of eternal salvation. He is the living word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word became flesh at conception and tabernacled amongst us. Flesh at conception, December 25th, and tabernacled amongst us, December 25th, September 29th. The Feast of Tabernacles. That means he's covering us. If you so please, the veil of Christ, heads of God, saturate me with the, with the Holy Spirit. Please hold my hand, my Lord Jesus Christ. Say your prayers, you repent, and understand what Jesus Christ did for you. Most precious in the universe. First and foremost in importance in the universe. Irreplaceable. Yaqid in the Hebrew. A very piece of God's personal life force. His personal soul was in the Lord Jesus Christ. That immaculate conception irreplaceable first and foremost importance in the universe he walked amongst us he did not sin one man had to die and walk amongst us and did not sin if jesus christ sinned the kingdom of heaven would not be valid or legit we would have no way out of this it's our trip to hell innocent not guilty took the lowest earthly position for us no guile no malice no corruption was found in the lord jesus christ Calvary at the cross was the most selfless act of love and compassion beyond our present comprehension that the universe has ever witnessed. He would do that for us, lay his precious life down for my pathetic white trash life. That's overwhelming to me. I can never thank you enough, my Lord Jesus Christ. You paid a price for me. I can never pay. I'm in a fallen condition. I know what I did. I followed 
the adversary. I admit it. Be brutally honest with yourself. You have to be. Hell will accept you just the way you are. This is a time of correction right now. We have to understand to get back into harmony with the universe. We have to come to terms with what's inside of us that is not conducive to a place of peace beyond our present comprehension. And we can only repent to one. He's the only one who can say this, Satan. You got nothing on me, you prick. You got nothing. He's the only one that can say, it is done. I did it. I defeated death and evil because Satan's got nothing on me. That makes my kingdom valid. It makes it legit. It makes it bona fide. We're talking the Millennium Temple. We'll not make concessions for evil. You're not going to go there with your ideologies. You're not going to die with a death grip on your pen and go like this. Jesus Christ, oh boy, you sit down, Jesus Christ. There's some things in here I do not like. Well, you can go play somewhere else with your ideologies because this is a place of peace beyond our present comprehension. It's a millennium. It's a thousand years where we still have to get cleaned up to be the bride of Christ to, for that marriage supper. And everybody's invited. We're all invited. Unless you want to perpetuate ideologies for personal gain now. As it's written, those who trade God's covenant for fleeting gain will have no share in the hereafter. Nothing. Enjoy it now, rich man. You big shot sitting there mocking us. We pray for you. We pray for your pathetic existence. We pray for you. Horses. Mobile powers. Swifter than leopards. This word is namer in the Hebrew. Leopard. You know a leopard is like stealth. The way it stalks its prey. And this, we're talking about an army here. This army will filtrate through your defenses like liquid. That's what the United States does. Hundreds and hundreds of military. Not called outposts. Military bases. All NATO ready. That means the massive infrastructure of weapons of mass destruction. Hundreds of them. They've had ground troops on 190 of the 193 countries recognized by the United Nations since World War II. Hey, United States, why don't you just do the last three just so you can say, yeah, we've done them all. I don't, I don't understand you. But now, why don't you go mind your own business and take care of your own country? No, it's getting looted. It's called decadence. It's the end of an empire. Evening wolves forms a huge thread through the Bible here in verse 8. Evening wolves means darkness. They're plodding in darkness. Evening means the darkness. Wolves. I'm going to try and get going here. Uh, do you want to know what the evening wolves are? You can go to Ze Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 3. Or this is a setup for Jeremiah chapter 5. Because it goes spoiling. Evening wolves. Okay, but if you want a good definition that's really easy, they all are. Man, this book is written in the common pen. If I can find the book of Ezekiel in a good time, here it is. Same grammatical construct. The princes in the midst thereof are like wolves ravening the prey to shed blood and destroy souls to get dishonest gain. Ezekiel chapter 22, 27. There's your thread. Ezekiel 22, 27 for dishonest gain. Zephaniah chapter 3, 3. Jeremiah chapter 5. Dishonest gain. That thread just runs a clothesline through the Bible. Way bigger than that, but for the sake of time, I'll just, just leave it there. And their horsemen, their expressive revealing mobile power spread themselves. Hey, why don't you just stay in your own country, United States? No, this out of control and industrial military complex is all over the world. And they're proud of it. Did you see Gregory Hayes of Raytheon, the CEO, standing there with these, the most evil human beings on planet Earth, standing around that iconic bell at the New York Stock Exchange before, the, before Ukraine got really ramped up a couple years ago. And he's talking about, here's Gregory Hayes, CEO of Raytheon, three-piece suit, these snakes in suits. I see... Money-making opportunities in the South China Sea and in Ukraine. And the bell just went off. The stocks went up. They just make money off killing human beings. These are merchants of death. What about you, Katie, from North Rock Roman? Sitting there on CNN bragging about this stealth airplane that can drop a nuclear payload anywhere on planet Earth without being detected. <sighs> Katie, you're so dreamy. CEO, North Rock Grumman. We pray for these people. That's the Chaldeans with their thought processes, using it for evil ways. 
All the evil in the world comes from the human heart. And you warmongers got a special place in hell, according to Ezekiel. You can't even look up to see hell. You're so far down. And you deserve it. Go play somewhere else. And they shall fly as an eagle that hasteneth to eat. You're just a consumer. You're just taking. It's not flopping around like a dirty old pigeon. This is an eagle. Focused. An eagle can see three miles away. And a rabbit just moving in the brush from three miles. Then hyper-focus on that thing. Psh! Like your stealth bombers, Katie, North Rock Grumman. You're sick puppies, man. Just sick puppies. I'm embarrassed to be a human being with those people walking on planet Earth. And I pray for the whole human family. Let's go to chat, uh, verse 6 here. Now, the, the glossary for the horsemen, leopards, and wolves. We went over that. Daniel, Revelation. It's the same. It's the same. Okay? Horse, expressive, revealing, mobile power. It's not a pony in some petting zoo. Uh, they come up, and what are they doing? Here's... Their function of duty. They come, they shall come, all for violence. That means not just destruction. They always say it's to restore democracy. They haven't restored democracy anywhere. They've invaded so many countries, I can't even sit there. It's up to you to look how many regime changes the United States and their NATO patsies have been behind. And then they use the mainstream media to prompt to pump out justification through patriotism. Be very careful. Look for the truth. Follow the money and consider humanity. God doesn't care in God's eyes. You're female, male, your color, your skin, your race. We're all God's children. And through this infodemic, they control information through censorship and obsessive messaging to try and sow the seeds of hatred and phobias. They had us hating our Muslim brothers. Hey, Abraham, Ishmael. What about that? Isaac, Jacob, we're all brothers. What are you going to say about that? Just have us hating people. They should, okay. Come for violence. Their faces shall sup up as the east wind. What's that mean? Well, the east wind coming out of there to the Middle East there, the east coming off the desert just sucks the life out of everything. And that's what they do. That's what the United States of America, it's the people behind it, the capitalist corpocracy, just sucking the life of any, out of everything. How much money do you need? I'd like to ask Nancy Pelosi. You're up $120 million, you civil servant. How much money, like how big of a house do you need? How many cars do you, do you need for yourself? I don't get it. I just don't understand how much stuff and things. God will give you what you need, not what you greed. Enjoy it now, Nancy Pelosi, Fauci. Austin, all you civil servants, Fauci, Cheney, the, all of them, you merchants of death, just brutal lack of humanity within the psyche, the spirit, the intellect of their soul. That's where it's going somewhere when you die. It's a closed energy system. Remember that. It doesn't exchange physical matter. We talk about exchange as light because that's what the Bible calls information. The word information isn't in the Bible. It's the word light. You get a psychological reaction processed by the brain to initiate a physiological response. Your spirit is your governing index of your inward thoughts, feelings. It's your reactive attitude that motivates all actions. It's what motivates these people. Greed, gluttony, excess. What's in it for me? That's your spirit, your psyche, that closed energy system goes somewhere when you die. This body goes back in the dirt. Who wants it anyway? Suppositions. when they can't get enough. Hey, what do they think? Like I'm up 120 million bucks. I've, I, I'm, I'm responsible for, for thousands and millions of deaths. Now what? What do you sit there and count? What do you think you're going to take it with you? You think there's a trailer on a hearse? I don't understand you people at all. I just don't get it. They sh and, and you can go play somewhere else. God's got a place set up for you. There's, there's no praise or presence of God in the nether parts of the earth. You don't care. And that's, you can have it. You can sit there and just argue with each other and try and prove your point over and over. When you have no point, people love it. They love the constant drama, distrust, disorder, chaos, pandemonium. They love perpetuating it. Those people can go play somewhere else. They don't want God in their life now. So God says, hey, it hurts me because I love you, but I'll give you somewhere else to go because God is fair. There has to be a great separation of people, people like me and you, that want to get back to a place of peace beyond our present comprehension, to cohabitate with God in his circuits of time as it's written in Psalms chapter 90. Forever. These people can stay there. And they shall gather the captivity of the, as the sand. Oh, they just take whatever they want. Human beings, push them there. Push them into refugee places. Hey, there's too many people in Gaza. Oh, let's just start blowing them up. Let's just blow them up. We found some oil and natural gas off the Gaza Strip. Uh, there's some people in the way here. Hmm. 
let's just justify this through the media and let's just let's just pull off a genocide here of human beings okay captivity as the sand they shall scoff at the kings and the princes shall be a scorn unto them they shall deride every stronghold that means just regime change do we see that as if scoff at the kings and they shall heap dust and take it just again the heaping of the dust just means taking stuff and things so here's your key uh go this with verse 4 and verse 10 the morally corrupt lawmakers who form ethically corrupt governments. Verse 10, we're not talking about sovereign governments here, but the capitalist hypocrisy of rich white men and their lobby behind it, identifying all the people behind the governments. There it is right there in verse 10. They scoff at the kings. They scoff at the leaders. Doesn't matter who's in charge. Qaddafi, psh, Saddam Hussein, psh, doesn't matter. We're coming in. We're taking your shit. This, then shall his mind change and he shall pass over and offend imputing this his power unto his God. This is such a, this was hard. It was hard for me to translate this from the manuscripts through the lexicons. So I'll give it to the translators. It was a tough one, but I did it anyway. So I'll read it in Hebrew. The word change isn't in here and it's not mind at all. So we'll just go through this and I'll read it in Hebrew first. And it's, it's, it's Az Yurak Abar Asam Azu. Az Alap Yurak, Azalap Yurak, Abarazansu. Okay, at which time, this means, okay, at which time, pass on through the spirit of its overflowing army in all guilt of their offense. That's what's saying here. That's what's happening. This, its strength is for a God to it. It's the same grammatical construct as Psalms 12, 8. That's their God. Money's their God. They don't care how they get it. It's the pursuit of profit. Religion just means follower of one's own beliefs. That's their God. That's what they believe in. Worship just means faith. What you trust. What you, have, which, which, which you believe in. What you trust. And that's what you love. We love the Lord Jesus Christ. We have unwavering faith and belief in faith and belief in the Lord Jesus Christ so we can have relief with the Lord Jesus Christ. We trust the Lord Jesus Christ so we can be trusted. Unwavering faith and belief. So these, this is what these people trust. They trust Satan's system. He's the magistrate of the world, the treasure of the world. He's the schoolmaster of the world. And all your longings and wantings will rule over you unless you can snap out of the cult that you're in. These people are in and the only cult people never see is the one they're in. To change your religious authority. What you have faith in. What you believe. Everybody believes in something. Follower of one's own beliefs is what religion means. And the definition of that is found in the Bible, in the book of James. Now here, here's uh, Habakkuk. Verse 12, art thou not from everlasting, O Lord, my God, my Holy One? We shall not die. Okay, I got to stop there. We shall not die. I don't like this at all. I didn't find it in the manuscripts. Okay, this is what I found. It's lomoth, which means never die. And I understand, but I study the Quran and I, and I study the Bible, the this true sense meaning the full expression of the words the grammatical morphologies and grammatical constructs this would have been considered an irreverent expression so they changed it a little bit but we're saying god will never die and it could have just been added because god is an everlasting never-ending energy force energy cannot be created or destroyed in the beginning wisdom was there before the first atom was formed on the highest part of the on the highest part of the dust of the earth what God is saying when the whole universe was a pulverized dust, I became a consciousness and I possessed wisdom. That's why wisdom is feminine in the Bible. God is an energy, cannot be created or destroyed. God is, a, oh Lord, thou hast ordained them for judgment. That's right, we're all set aside, every one of us, the one third that fell. We're, we're there for a judgment. We're being judged. All God's ways are judgment. God's not judging what happens to you. He's judging what you do. Almighty God, thou hast established them for correction. That's right. Do you recognize? This is a period of correction, not a period of how much shit can I get in my driveway, how many shiny things, how much money can I get in my bank account. It's all about me. It's a time for correction. God's not judging what happens to you. He's judging what you do. God has nothing to prove to you. We have everything to prove to God. 
And God loves you. God loves us. Evil will destroy itself from within. That's his plan. It has to play itself out. He can't allow people with evil ideologies or ideologies that think they know better than God back into the kingdom of heaven. Or it'll be nothing but the same thing. It'll be distrust, disorder, chaos, pandemonium. It'll be division. The kingdom of heaven is unity. It's a place of perpetual friendship. It's the etymology of the word Jerusalem, a place of peace beyond our present comprehension. We can't even comprehend it right now. We've fallen so far into these flesh bodies. It's just brutal. God's trying to get our attention. It's not about personal wealth, personal gain, what's in it for me. It's about what's in it for us. It's about sacrificing for each other, giving to each other. Supporting God's word, supporting the message of Christ's love to get out there to a hurting world, to help glorify, magnify, and broadcast God's word. The devil will put the spirit of stinginess on you. And the spirit of, I'm going to fall into poverty if I support a pastor or if I support some nonprofit uh, Bible teacher. God promises you invest in me, all bountiful. You get back thousandfold, thousandfold. Almighty God, that was established them for correction. That's all of us. Let's try and get through these three verses. Now here's Habakkuk. It seems like Habakkuk is taunting God. Remember, Habakkuk didn't have this book that answers every logical, moral objection to mankind. Jesus Christ said, I told you all things. We have it in our hands. Never taunt God. So this is what Habakkuk is saying here. Thou art of pure eyes than to behold evil. Is it, is, are you too good to see evil? Can't you look on this iniquity, God? Wherefore, remember, this is a vision. This is a vision that, God's, that Habakkuk's having through God. Wherefore, look us up, because a lot of us will ask this question, why does God allow all this evil to play out? But we answered that already. That's God's plan. Evil will destroy itself from within. Don't be part of it. God will give you a way out. You will not like it. It's not a million dollar check. You're not going to get a limousine ride. He'll give you a way out. It takes unadulterated faith and belief, or you get no relief. Or you can just keep chasing the rat race. There's no humanity found in the individual at all. The rat race shows no humanity for the individual. Thou lookest upon them treacherously and holdest thy tongue. You can see what's going on, all these evil people. God's going, yeah, I know. I'm watching it play out. I'm not running a daycare here. And holdest thy tongue when the wicked devoureth the man that is more righteous than he. God's not running a daycare. All the evil has to play itself out to have, so it's a fair separation of people. You people played it this way. You didn't want any praise or presence of God in your heart whatsoever. No love of Christ in your heart. You made fun of this. You mocked it. You know, you sat around and humiliated people. You shamed us. You lied against us. You shunned us. You discredited us. You used to sit that back there and laughing at us. That's fine. You guys can go play somewhere else. You geniuses ambassadors of arrogance see you later you've worn out your caregiver what more can we do remember paul in acts chapter 20 what he just said we just did the book of acts this is the greatest thing it'll make you feel so much better when you give to a ministry or when you try and you know plant the seeds of truth in somebody paul says wherefore i take record to you this day you heathen people okay watch this i'm saying this publicly i am pure from the blood of all men I have not shunned to declare unto you the counsels of God. I did my job. I sat in front of here and did hundreds and hundreds of podcasts trying to get people to come to the Lord Jesus Christ just like Pastor Arnold Murray did. How do you think Pastor Arnold Murray back in the 90s, his little Bible study, how do you think it got all that TV time? Three o'clock in the morning, I'm laying there in 1996 or 97 or something staring at the ceiling. Believe me, I had to look up to see hell. I wasn't financially hurting. Believe me. I was just in a subculture that I was going to get shot and killed any day. And then all of a sudden at 3 in the morning, there's Pastor Earl Murray on TV. Did he put himself on TV? No, people supporting him did. Or I would have never been invited to Pastor Earl Murray's personal Bible study on his kitchen table. People have to support the truth. You get the same rewards. Don't be stingy. The spirit of stinginess comes from the devil. If people were stingy and they saw Pastor Earl Murray back in the 90s saying, I'm not going to give that guy any of my money. Oh, I have to go to the... I have to go to the mall. I have to update my vehicle. I'm going to go shopping for my own things. What if no one gave Pastor Earl Murray money? To support God's truth, help glorify, magnify, and broadcast God's saving word in the 90s. I wouldn't be here right now doing this, trying to do the same thing Pastor Earl Murray did. Help spread the message of Christ's love to a hurting world. It's your call to action to support God's word to get out there. The people that supported Pastor Al Murray, not him to increase his lifestyle. He didn't go buy a jet airplane. He didn't go buy a big giant house. He didn't even take a salary. 
He just went and taught the Bible. But the reason that he could do that to the whole world was because people supported his word. And they get the same rewards as he did, or his Bible study would have never left his kitchen table. Just like this one. You know, we have a little bit more technology today. There's been a lot more prophetic updates. So thank you. And, and then I supported Pastor Earl Murray. And bought hundreds and hundreds of cassettes and studied and studied and studied. It's no cakewalk, man. It's no cakewalk to understand that everything, all the deeply ingrained habits of thought that I was, that were in my mind, ended up being lies. I was lied about just everything. Just lied about everything. And then yet it takes a while to come to terms with that. I mean, you always know this is the truth and the truth will set you free. That Jesus Christ will never leave you or forsake you. So we were talking about Okay, he's getting taunted a little bit, but we don't we can't do this. We're talking about what these people do. These elite unelected world leaders and elected world leaders, they have money behind them. They make us men as fishes of the sea and creepy things, and they have no ruler over them. These are the kings with no sovereign kingdom written of in the book of Revelation. Ten kings with no sovereign kingdom. Ten when applied in biblical numerics to God means his order of perfection. When applied to man, these ten kings means mankind's attempt at order of perfection, which is a complete fail. It's a paradox of impossibilities, a 100% failure rate at governing ourselves. We're destroying each other, destroying this planet. Now there's a big eugenics thing going on with that inoculation. Everybody line up for that. Enough for that. We are surplus and expendable. They take up all the men with the angle. Okay, the hook. I hate, I hate nautical terms, man. The hook. They hook them in, okay? And catch them in their net and gather them in their drag. Therefore, they rejoice and they're glad. This is death's dragnet. Uh, this is uh, the fourth seal, trump, and vial. And death's dragnet is the education system. Satan is the schoolmaster of the world. He got education throughout the world. He tells everybody what to think, say, and do, and they just line up and do it through obsessive messaging, through these catchphrases, idea, inoculation. Major media gives catchphrases to people of limited intelligence and they jump on them. They're never more than five words or ten syllables. I trust the science. Have you ever read any scientific journals of, uh, you ever read Science Immunology or the International Journal of Infectious Disease? Are you on the, even Fauci's library? Do you go there? National Institute of Public Health Library? National Institute of Health Public Library? Science Direct? ResearchGate.com? No, but I trust the science. Oh, oh, you're an anti vaxxer well, geez, there's a, uh, how many syllables is that anti, that's two words, four or five syllables in there. Well, that's just a good one. Conspiracy theorist. Oh, I'm a conspiracy, who's a conspiracy theorist now, right? The truth always is there. You can smoke screen it all you want. That's Dragnet. Revelation chapter six, the fourth seal. That's Dragnet. Don't get dragged up in it. Therefore, they sacrifice unto their net and burn incest unto their drag. They, they worship it. Look what we got surplus and expendable we're taking all their money there's been a great great disconnect between the rich and the poor there's been a great transfer of wealth from the poor to the rich they just want to take everything they can't get enough they can't get enough therefore they sacrifice unto the yeah they said that's what they sacrifice their love unto it their time that's what they sacrifice their their time energy their thought process because their portion is fat and their meat is plain. So it's all about the cake. They shall therefore empty their net and not spare continually to slay nations. Are they going to stop this? No. God said no. Not until Jesus Christ comes up and uh, comes and wraps up the affairs of time in this flesh age. Seventh vial, seventh seal, seventh trump. Till evil has. I forget what it says. I forget. Oh, I hate that when I forget stuff. Come to its full term. When evils come to its full term. Like, we're getting pretty close now. We've got nuclear weapons pointed at each other. You know, it's just about time. Just do it, man. Just bring it. Let's get on with the affairs of time. Just press it. Let's get this over with. I will stand upon my watch and say, okay, we're in chapter 2 now. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. We're going to the third verse because it's that where it should have ended. Uh, okay, he's going to watch. Okay, this is... Uh, Habakkuk said, I'm going to watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I'm reproved. Oh, Habakkuk knows. Habakkuk's got balls to talk to God like that, but he didn't know any better back then. This was a vision, okay? For us, for examples, for us in these times, why does God allow all the evil in the world to play itself out? Because it has to. It has to destroy itself from within. We have to see the hypocrisy of it all, the paradox of impossibilities of this evil construct and these wicked human beings so that when we see them going to hell, it's not going to really hurt us. We prayed for them. You've exhausted your caregiver. 
just get lost, man. Get lost. You've exhausted your caregiver. We pray for you. We don't want to see anybody suffering. But if that's what you like, the constant bickering and arguing and trying to control each other and your self-pride and your division, your trust disorder, chaos, you can have it. It's there. In a harbor or haven, the fire is the internal passion of the mind. You go to Isaiah chapter 4, Isaiah chapter 9. You go to James chapter 3, verse 6, tells you what the fire is. God's not staying there like a Hitler with a big torch going, burning human beings. You sick Christian puppy to even think like that. Read your Bible. It's the internal passion of the mind. They want it. They want to be there. They love it. They love discord. They love pointing fingers at each other. Oh, yes, it's that person there. You can do that for an eternity. Right? You can have that. We're going to place a place of peace beyond a present comprehension, perpetual friendship, a place of unity, a place of trust. Imagine billions of people, and you can trust every single one. Nobody has an ulterior motive lingering. What can I get from that person? How can I take some? What about my personal one? We have nothing because we have everything. We get to explore the infinite intricacies of God's creation. The way he created us, all of us shouting out, singing for joy, the whole human family in totality shouting out an infinite felicity. That's where we want to get everybody back to. But if people don't want it, because they let their feelings compromise their intelligence, they can't be corrected because of their ego, you can go play somewhere else. You've exhausted your caregiver. As Paul said, I washed my hands from this, man. We tried our best. Okay, we tried our best. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon the tables that he may run and read it. You can run this Bible like it's cat in the hat from Dr. Seuss. It's so easy to understand. Once you find the key, I'm trying to share it for everybody. That's what he said. He can run this. He can read it and run with it. You understand it. It's written in the common pen. As soon as you get all those traditions of men from mainstream Christian who sugarcoated this word, just sugarcoat it and destroyed it out of your mind. The truth will set you free. Make it plain. Make it easy. They can run with it. They can read it and run with it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, us right now. But at the end it shall speak. It's louder than words right now. It's playing out on the world stage. And not lie. Hey, dude, this is going down. Though it tarry, yeah, it waited for a couple thousand years. But one day with the Lord is a thousand years. So what's that? Two days, really? One day to the Lord is a thousand years. Wait for it because it will surely come. It will not, And when it comes, it's going to come, man. It's going to come full throttle, man. Pour on the coals to her. We're past the fifth seal, Trump violates the dynasty of censorship, entering the sixth as it escalates and intensifies into the sixth. Well, I want to thank you very much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this. The book of Habakkuk is just so beyond surreal it is for real we're watching it play out on the world stage today companion chapel this is a registered nonprofit ministry please help support this ministry like and subscribe whatever you can to help glorify magnify and grow and broadcast god's saving word companionchapel.com send me ten dollars or more and it's just to help pay for the internet help pay try to promote these videos trying to get them out there the message of christ's love out to a hurting world that's why it's a nonprofit. that's for you to know that i'm not ever going to increase my lifestyle because i could care less i live in grinding poverty i want to die with the amount of money i have my in my bank account now minus 10 cents i want to die with minus 10 cents in my bank account but i want this church this remnant of truth you're part of it this companion chapel this registered nonprofit to get the message of Christ's love out to a hurting world, same way as Shepherd's Chapel did and still does to this day. I want to thank you very much for watching. Have yourself a great day and bye for now.